Does the Batman live up to the hype? Riddle me this, riddle me cargo. Who's afraid of a review embargo? Well, apparently not Warner Brothers or DC Comics. Because on Monday morning, the very first reviews and reactions to Matt Reeves highly anticipated the Batman hit the web, and while reviews seem mostly positive, not everyone was as enamored with the latest portrayal of the Caped Crusader as yours truly. So, the question is, does the Batman live up to the hype? Can this film sustain its epic three-hour runtime? And is anyone in this film wearing hockey pads? I'm not wearing hockey pants. Fortunately, it's Batman week here at Nerdist, and that means that in addition to all manner of deep dives into Gotham's Dark Knight, we're gonna try our hand at being the world's greatest detectives, and we're going to definitively answer these questions for you. So while we're keeping these review excerpts and reactions spoiler-free, if you want to go into this movie without a single clue, leave now before it's too late. Any of this mean anything to you? All right, let's get into it, shall we? Starring Robert Pattinson as Batman, Zoe Kravitz as Selina Kyle, Paul Dano as the Riddler, and Colin Farrell as Oswald Gabagool Cobblepot, the Batman offers a much darker and creepier version of Gotham City than we've seen previously. The film seems inspired by the works of David Fincher, film noir, and Batman comics like Year One, The Long Halloween, and maybe even Hush. For more on that, though, check out Rosie Knight's breakdowns over on Nerdist.com. With more than 100 reviews published on Rotten Tomatoes at the time of filming, reviews for The Batman seem largely positive, and some are overwhelmingly positive, like Nerdist senior editor Kyle Anderson, who described The Batman as his platonic ideal for a Batman movie. In his review, Kyle said, Though I've definitely enjoyed most movies that have featured the Cape Crusader, my specific favorite take on the character has never hit the big screen until now. Matt Reeves' The Batman is, for me, the very best Batman movie ever made. Praising Pattinson's emotive performance, Kyle added, This isn't a Bruce Wayne who pretends to be a playboy to cover up his nocturnal activities. This is a Bruce who is a complete recluse, fully devoted to the ideal of his Batman project, a self-proclaimed agent of vengeance with no other thought in mind. As such, he's the first version of the character who feels more himself as Batman than Bruce. And make sure you check out the full version of Kyle's review, both in article and video form, on Nerdist.com or our YouTube channel. Now moving on, showcasing Batman as more of a detective than a blunt force weapon seems to be one of the film's highlights for many. In his review for the playlist, Robert Daniels wrote, Batman's most appealing characteristic, his super sleuth brain power, exercised here in his interactions with Gordon as they navigate the Riddler's sprawling master plan, is wonderfully plotted and critiqued in Reeves and Peter Craig's incisive writing. And Rachel Leishman of the Mary Sue added, For once, it felt like I was watching a detective in Bruce Wayne. It wasn't just an offhand remark that reminded us he's supposed to be good at solving things or Alfred Pennyworth doing the heavy lifting. It was Bruce in the thick of it figuring things out and focusing his energy on trying to save Gotham. However, not everyone was as impressed by the Dark Knight's deductive reasoning. The New York Times' as Kyle Buchanan tweeted, People are like, finally they show Batman doing detective work. And that detective work is staring at an elaborate greeting card and wondering, could this be from the Riddler? Now, I would argue the bigger mystery here is whether Riddler's also an expert greeting card maker or if these are store-bought. Alas, we'll have to wait for the sequel to get an answer to that one. As for the film's supporting cast, one of the absolute standouts is Zoe Kravitz as Selina Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman. Geeks of Color's Dorian Park said Zoe Kravitz delivers an incredible performance as Selina Kyle. Her character's chemistry with Pattinson is pitch perfect. The cat and the bat are the strongest points in the film. And of course, what would a Batman movie be without its villains? Well, the Batman doesn't disappoint by offering up some of the Dark Knight's most iconic enemies. The Zodiac Killer-inspired Riddler, though, he may be the film's most divisive aspect, according to Polygon's Joshua Rivera. Much like Batman, Paul Dano is masked for most of the movie, a character that's more in line with Jigsaw from the Saw franchise than the Quizmaster of the comics. He's a cruel constructor of death traps out to impart some kind of moral lesson that won't be revealed until the movie's end. Unfortunately, he looks quite silly, somehow requiring more suspension of disbelief than the guy in pointy ears trying to catch him. But on the other end of the spectrum, though, discussing film's Diego Andalus said, Paul Dano's performance as the Riddler in The Batman is one for the ages. The indubitable MVP of the cast, his chilling turn is a top three comic book movie villain performance that falls only under Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix in The Dark Knight and Joker. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to Colin Farrell's portrayal of Oswald Cobblepot, many were just as impressed by his physical transformation as his bombastic character. Nerdist Kyle Anderson wrote, Farrell is essentially doing a Robert De Niro impression the entire time underneath his heavy makeup. It's silly, but also it's somewhat endearing after a while. His Penguin is the closest the movie has to true comic relief, yet he still feels incredibly dangerous. 
Others, like Entertainment Weekly's Leah Greenblatt, questioned, what is Hollywood's recent fetish with casting the prettiest actors, then burying them in Shrek face prosthetics? Like ogres, penguins also have lairs. But the real question here is, at the end of the day, is the epic runtime worth the wait? Where does the Batman sit in the superhero movie pantheon, especially compared to previous Bat films and the MCU? Well, some like ComicBook.com's Jenna Anderson loved how different it felt compared to other comic book movies. The Batman is a ridiculous, bold, brilliant event, absolutely jam-packed with style and a surprising sense of humor. It's like nothing else in this space, and that has only made me love it more with each passing moment. I'm obsessed. Screen Crush's Matt Singer explained how the Batman differs from other Batman films by directors like Christopher Nolan and Zack Snyder. Rather than presenting a non-stop barrage of chases and fights, the Batman director Matt Reeves uses action as sporadic punctuation in a genuine detective story. Unlike most of Batman's recent cinematic adventures and most superhero films in general these days, this is a mystery of epic length, not an adventure of epic scale. Andy Wire's David Ehrlich also praised how the Batman feels markedly different compared to both the Snyderverse and the MCU. No, the better part of this Batman belongs to another genre entirely, as Reeves stubbornly eschews the usual razzmatazz in favor of a hard-boiled murder mystery in which the world's greatest detective just happens to be a very tortured billionaire with an unexplained hard-on for bats. Now, those differences might not be enough for some critics, though. As Seattle Times critic Moira McDonald said, Your mileage may vary, but for me, who love both the Tim Burton and the Christopher Nolan Batman universes, this one feels like an earnest but bloated misfire. And then there are those like film poser's Josie Marie, who is undeterred by its epic runtime. She said not to exaggerate, but The Batman is one of the best films of recent years. Matt Reeves is a commanding force, creating a delicious detective drama with a powerhouse cast. I would have watched five hours of this. Anyway, folks, there you have it. That's what the critics are saying about Matt Reeves' The Batman. And for my money, it's a phenomenal, creepy, slow burn mystery that stands among the very best of the Batman films. Not only does it set up intriguing plot threads for the future, but it weaves an intricate tapestry of mysteries that unfold very satisfyingly over the course of this film. But don't take my word for it. Go see for yourself when the Batman hits theaters on March 4th. And then after that, extend your stay in Gotham by perusing the awesome articles, videos, and other goodies we're rolling out all week long as part of Batman Week. In the meantime, though, folks, tell us, what do you think? Are you going to see the Batman? And what is your favorite Batman movie so far, and why? Amen. Let us know in the comments below. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.